Hi guys, this is Manohar and welcome to Tutorials. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the topic efficiency in the time and work. Actually, this is the fourth part of time and work tutorial. If you haven't watched the previous parts, I recommend you to please watch the previous parts of time and work tutorial so that you can come to know what is the concept of time and work and also what are the methods we use to solve the problems. Now in this tutorial, we will gonna discuss the efficiency in detail in the time and work. Okay, now what is efficiency? Actually, I have already told you efficiency is nothing but rate of work or we can also define it as the amount of work done by a person in one hour or one day and so on. In the same way, I have already told you total work in the time and work can be defined as efficiency of a person into total time taken by the person. Now, by considering that definition only, I will derive how to write efficiency and total time in the time and work. Okay, I am considering the same definition for all the tutorials in time and work because that is the basic definition and by considering that definition, if I derive the formulas and also methods, you will understand very quickly how to do the problems. Okay, now I am considering the same definition. Total work in time and work equal to efficiency of a person into total time taken by the person to complete the work. Okay, I am considering this same definition for all the tutorials because if I derive the formulas or methods using the same definition in all the tutorials, you will come to know how to use total time and efficiency in problems. Okay, that's the reason I am considering same definition for all the deriving formulas and also methods. Okay, now I have already told you total work in the time and work will be always constant and we treat it as one part. But in chain rule, this is different and I have already uh, explained you in the previous tutorial. But in uh, time and work actually, we treat total work as one part. Okay, so I am, uh, I am including total work as one part in the definition. And also, we don't know what is the efficiency of a person and also we don't know what is the total time. So, I can write it as, as the efficiency into total time. Okay, now I am sending this total time to the left hand side. So I will get 1 by total time taken by a person to complete the work equal to efficiency of a person. Okay, now from this we can simply say efficiency of a person is inversely proportional to the total time taken to complete the work. Okay, so from this definition, we can simply say efficiency is inversely proportional to the total time taken by a person to complete the work. So, if the efficiency is more than total time taken to complete the work will be less. If the efficiency is less, the total time taken to complete the work will be more. Okay, so efficiency and total time taken to complete the work is always inversely proportional. Now I will take some more examples so that you can come to know how to write efficiency and total time by a person when it is given in the problems. Okay. Now I have written this relationship between efficiency and total time here. So efficiency and total time will be always inversely proportional in time and work. And also I will take two examples to show you how to write efficiency and total time so that you can come to know how to use this efficiency concept in solving the problems. Now I am taking the first example. Suppose assume a is twice the efficiency of B. A is twice the efficiency of B. And also I am considering another example. A takes two times more work, sorry, more time to complete the work. to complete the work than B. Okay, one example is A is twice the efficiency of B. Another example is A takes two times more time than B to complete the work. Now I am taking the first example. So they are saying that A is twice the efficiency of B. So A does the work two times better than B. Okay, A is twice the efficiency of B. So A does the work two times more better than B. So we can write it as A equal to 2B in efficiency. Okay, so A equal to 2B. Now, uh, they are saying that A is twice the efficiency of B. Suppose, if I assume, suppose, suppose if I assume 
the efficiency of B as X. Okay, I am assuming the efficiency of B as X. So the efficiency of A will become 2X. Okay, since they have given A is twice the efficiency of B. So if I assume the efficiency of B as X, the efficiency of A will become 2X this. Okay, now uh, if efficiency is X and 2X, the efficiency and total time taken will be always inversely proportional. Then total time taken by A and B will become X 2X. Okay, I hope you are getting my point. See, suppose if I uh, consider the efficiency of B as X, then the efficiency of A will become 2X. Now, since the efficiency and total time taken are inversely proportional, we can write the total time taken by A and B to complete the work will be X and 2X. Always reciprocal. Okay. And also we can write it as uh, in this way also. Suppose if I consider the total time taken for B as X days, the total time taken by A to complete the same work is X by 2. Okay, we can write in the both the ways, the both ways are correct. We can write 2x and x here or x and x by 2 here. The both ways are correct. Okay, and also I am considering this example so that A takes 2 times more time to complete the work than B. Suppose assume B takes x days to complete the work. Okay, now A takes 2x days to complete the work. Okay, since they have given that A takes 2 times more time than B to complete the work. In the same way, if I consider it uh, efficiency, the efficiency and total time will be always inversely proportional. Then the efficiency of A and B will become X 2X. Okay, I hope you are getting my point. Now I will explain uh, these scenarios with examples so that we can understand in more detail. Okay, now I am assuming, suppose B takes 10 days to complete the work. Then B's efficiency or B's one day's work will become 1 by 10. Right, B takes 10 days to complete the work, so B's efficiency will become 1 by 10. Now, what is the A's efficiency? We have know that A equal to 2B. So, I can write in the place of B, I am substituting this 1 by 10. So, I will get 1 by 5. 1 by 5 in the sense, A's efficiency is 1 by 5. A totally takes 5 days to complete the work. So, I will uh, substitute the, these values here so that you can understand how I have wrote this efficiency and time taken by the person to complete the work. See, I am considering this 10. So, B takes 10 days to complete the work. So, B is taking 10 days to complete the work, right? So, B takes X equal to 10 days to complete the work. Now, what is the time taken for A to complete the work? That is 5 days. Now, if I substitute this X equal to 10 here, I will get 10 by 2 that is 5 days. Correct or not? So, in the same way, I will substitute efficiency also here so that you can understand how I have wrote efficiency. See, suppose B is taking 10 days to complete the work and B's efficiency is 1 by 10. So, X equal to 1 by 10. Now, what is the efficiency of A? That is 2X. So, 2 into 1 by 10. That is 1 by 5. Right? In this way, I have written this efficiency and total time taken. I will explain you the uh, same scenario with taking another example in this uh, example. So, consider A is taking so, or B is taking 20 days to complete the work. Suppose assume B taking 20 days to complete the work. Now, A takes 2 times more time than B to complete the work. So, A is taking 2 into 20 equal to 40 days to complete the work. Okay, now I substitute these values here so that you can understand how I have wrote efficiency and total time taken. Now, B is taking 20 days to complete the work. So, X equal to 20 days here. Then, A is 2 times more time than B. So, 2 into 20, 2 into X, that is 2 into 20. So, 40. Okay, and also I will substitute the values in efficiency. Since B is taking 20 days to complete the work, B's efficiency will be 1 by 20. Okay. Now I am substituting B's efficiency as 1 by 20 here. So 2 into 1, 2 into x will be 1 by 20. Okay. 2 into x will be 1 by 20. Now A's efficiency. What is A's efficiency? A is taking totally 40 days to complete the work. Then A's efficiency will be 1 by 40. Okay. A's efficiency will be 1 by 40. Now, here, what is the A's efficiency? It is X. So, to find X, I will send this 2 to the right hand side. I will get X equal to 1 by 40. Okay, here 1 by 40 is the A's efficiency. Here also we got 1 by 40. 
So in this way, I have wrote the efficiency and also total time taken to complete the work. See, if you have not understood this efficiency concept at one time, try to watch more and more times until you understand what is efficiency and also how to write efficiency or total time taken by a person in solving the problems. Okay, because the efficiency concept in time and work is so confusing and there are more chances that you do the problems in wrong way in exams. Okay, the only thing you need to consider and also you need to remember in efficiency concept is efficiency and total time will be always inversely proportional. Okay, whenever the efficiency is more, the total time will be less and whenever the efficiency will be less, the total time will be more. Now let's see how to write efficiencies when it is given in the form of percentages. I will consider two examples and also I will show you how to write efficiencies when it is given in the form of percentages in the problems. Okay, suppose I am considering one example that is A is 50% more efficient than B. Okay, now I am considering another example. A is 50% as efficient as B. Okay, one example is A is 50% more efficient than B and another is A is 50% as efficient as B. So I am writing here A and B. A, B. Okay, A is 50% more efficient than B. Suppose if I consider the total efficiency of B as 100%, I am considering total efficiency of B as 100%, then total efficiency of A will become 150%. Since they have given that A is 50% more efficient than B. So if 50%, if 100% is the total efficiency of B, then 150% is the total efficiency of A. Okay, in the same way, A is 50% as efficient as B. Suppose if B's efficiency is 100%, A's efficiency will become 50%. Okay, you need to uh, read the keywords here very carefully. Here the keyword is more efficient. Okay, here the keyword is as efficient as B. Okay, here 50% more efficient than B. Here 50% as efficient as B. So 50% more in the sense, if B is 100, then A will become 150. 50% as efficient as B is nothing but B is 100% and A is 50%. See, so you need to read the problems very carefully and check the keywords whether it is given as more efficient or as efficient. And also find that whether it is given as twice the time or twice the efficiency. Okay, if you read the problem wrongly, you will don't get the answer and also you will lose all the time in the exams. That's the reason, try to read more carefully the question when it comes to efficiency problems. Okay, now let's solve some problems based on this efficiency concept so that you can come to know how to use this all the methods in solving the problems. Now let us look at our first problem. They are saying that working efficiencies of A and B for completing a piece of work are in the ratio 3 is to 4. Now the number of days to be taken by them to complete the work are in the ratio. So we need to find out what is the ratio of number of days taken by them to complete the work. Now they are saying that efficiencies of A and B are in the ratio 3 is to 4. Okay, 3 is to 4. So these are efficiencies of A and B. Efficiencies of A and B. So we need to find out what is the ratio of days to be taken by them to complete the work. I have already told you the efficiencies and the number of days taken by them are always inversely proportional. So since the efficiencies are in the ratio of 3 is to 4, the number of days taken by them to complete the work will be are in the ratio of 4 is to 3. Okay, this is very simple. This is from the definition only. Always the efficiencies and number of days taken by them will be inversely proportional. So efficiencies are in the ratio of 3 is to 4. Days will be 4 is to 3. Now let's see the second problem. They are saying that if 10 persons can do a job in 20 days, then 20 persons with twice the efficiency can do the job in. So this problem can be solved in two methods. One is normal method and also another one is chain rule method. One is normal method and one is chain rule method okay now they are saying that 10 persons can do a job in 20 days okay now 10 persons one day's work will be 1 by 20 okay now one person's one day's work will be one person's one day's work will be 1 by 200 okay understand this 10 persons one day work will be 1 by 20 now, one person's one day work will be 1 by 20 into 1 by 10, that is 1 by 200. Now, they are saying that person with twice the efficiency, what is the time taken for them to complete the work? 
Now I am considering one person as P1 and another person as P2. Okay, P1 and P2. So they are saying that P2 is twice the efficiency of P1. So we can write it as P2 equal to 2P1. Okay, P2 is twice the efficiency of P1. Now they are saying that P2 is twice the efficiency of P1. So let us consider the efficiency of P1 as x. Then the efficiency of P2 will become 2x. Okay, efficiency. So they have told that P2 is the twice the efficiency of P1. Then P2's efficiency will be 2x. Now I have already told you the efficiency and the number of days will be always inversely proportional. Now the ratio of number of days taken by P1 and P2 will be 2x and x. Okay, the efficiency and number of days will be always inversely proportional. So the ratio of P1 and P2 in the number of days taken will be 2x and x. Now we need to find out what is the total time taken. Okay, now P1 persons one day's work will be 1 by 200. Now, what is the efficiency of person with twice the efficiency? That is 2P1. Okay. 2P1. That is 1 by 200 into 2. That is 2 ones, 2 hundreds. 1 by 100. This is the efficiency of P2. That is 2P1. Okay. This is the efficiency of P2. That is twice the efficiency. That is P21. 2P1. Okay. Now, what is the time taken for 20 persons like this? Okay. 20 persons of 2P1, that is P2, which is twice the efficiency of P1. Now, we will get 1 by 100 into 20. That is 21 is 25 equal to 1 by 5. So, P2 of 20 persons can complete the job in 5 days. Okay. This is the one day's work and totally that takes 5 days to complete the job. Now let's see the chain rule, how it works to solve the problem. They are saying that P2 is twice the efficiency of P1, that is person 2 and person 1. And also they are saying that 10 persons can complete the job in 20 days. 10 persons in the sense 10 P1, okay. 10 P1 have worked for 20 days to complete the job. That is total work done is 1, okay. 10 P1 have worked for 20 days to complete the job. Now we need to find out what is the time taken for 20 P2 that is twice the efficiency of P1 20 P2 to complete the job so 20 P2 to complete the job how much time taken okay now we can use the formula P1 D1 equal to P2 D2 because the total work to be done in both the scenarios is equal okay now I am using the formula P1 D1 equal to P2 D2 okay now I can get I am substituting these values P1 is nothing but 10 P1 into T1 is 20 equal to P2 is 20 P2 into D2. P2 is nothing but 2 P1. So I can substitute 10 P1 into 20 equal to 20 into P2 is nothing but 2 P1. 2 P1 into T2. So if I cancel this, I can come P1 and P1 will be cancelled 10 ones. 10 20s and uh, so 2 1s, 2 10s and 2 1s, 2 5s. So D2 is nothing but 5 days. So 20 persons with twice the efficiency can take 5 days to complete the same work. Now let's see the third problem. They are saying that A takes twice as much as B and C takes thrice as much as B to finish a piece of work. Working together, they can finish the work in 12 days. The number of days needed for A alone to do the work. So we need to find out what is the time taken for A alone to finish the work. Now they have given that A takes twice as much as B and C takes thrice as much as B. In both the scenarios, the B is common. That's the reason I am considering B equal to X days to complete the work. And also they have given that A takes twice as much as B. Since B is only X days, A becomes 2X days. Okay. And also C equal to thrice as much as B. Since B is only X days, C becomes 3X days. And also they have given that A, B and C all together can finish the work in 12 days. Okay. Now B's one day's work will be 1 by X. A's one day's work will be 1 by 2X. C's one day's work will be 1 by 3X. And also A plus B plus C, one day's work will be 1 by 12. 
Now, if I substitute a, b and c values in the a plus b plus c, I will come to know what is the value of x. Then, if I substitute the value of x in a, I will come to know what is the time taken for a alone to finish the work. Okay. Now, I am substituting this all the values in a plus b plus c, I will get 1 by 2x plus 1 by x plus 1 by 3x equal to 1 by 12. The LCM of 2, 1 and 3 that is 6. 6x. Okay. 1 by 2x into 6x that is 3 plus 1 by x into 6x will be 6 plus 1 by 3x into 6x will be 2 equal to 1 by 12. So, 6 ones, 6 twos, 12. The value of 3 plus 6 plus 2 that is 6 plus 3 is 9 and 9 plus 2 will be 11. 11 into 2 that is 22 equal to x. Now, 8x, 2x days that is a equal to 2 into 22 equal to 44 days. Okay. Now, let us look at our fourth problem. They are saying that a is 40% more efficient than b and both together can complete a work in 9 3 by 8 days. If A works for the first 5 days alone, then the remaining work will be completed by B. In how many days the total work will be completed? So, we need to find out what is the total amount of time or days to complete the work. Okay. Now, they are saying A is 40% more efficient than B. I have already told you how to write efficiencies when it comes to percentages. Now, they are saying A is 40% more efficient than B. So, if I assume B's efficiency has 100%, I will get A's efficiency will be 140%. A is 40% more efficient than B. If I assume B's efficiency as 100%, A's efficiency will be 140%. So, if I cancel this to 27 is 140 and 25 is 100. So, A's and B's efficiencies are in the ratio 7 is to pi. So, A is completing 7 parts per day or 7 units per day. B is completing 5 units per day. Okay, And also they are saying that a and B combiningly can complete the work in 9, 3 by 8 days. Okay, so 8 into 9 that is 72, 72 plus 3, 75 by 8 days. A and B combiningly can complete the total work in 75 by 8 days. So we have known what is the efficiencies and also what is the total time taken. So we need to find out what is the total amount of work to be done. Then we can find after working for 5 days, what is the total amount of work completed by A and also what is the total amount of work that is left over. Then we can find what is the time taken for B to complete the remaining work. Okay, first we need to find out what is the total amount of work that is to be done. So to get this total work, we need to total work equal to efficiency of a person into total time taken. This is the basic definition I am telling you since the starting tutorial. Okay, the total work will equal to efficiency of a person into total time taken. Now we have known efficiencies. A and B are working together, so 7 parts and 5 parts that is 12 units of work per day, and also they are working for 75 by 8 days. So we will get 4 3 is 12 and 4 2 is 8 that is 75 into 3 that is 225 by 2. This is the total amount of work to be done. And they are saying that A is working for only 5 days alone. So, A is completing 7 parts of work per day. After working for 5 days, A will complete After working for 5 days, A will complete 7 into 5 that is 35 units of work. Okay. After working for 5 days, A was completed 35 units of work. So, the remaining work will be 225 by 2 minus 35 units. 2 into 35 will be 70. So, 225 minus 70 by 2. That is 155 by 2 units. A have worked for 5 days. So, A have completed 7 into 5. That is 35 units. Out of 225 by 2 units, 35 units are already completed. So, the remaining work is 155 by 2 units. To complete this 155 by 2 units, B totally takes, B is completing 5 parts per day. So, to complete this 155 by 2 units, B takes B equal to 155 by 2 by 5. This can also be written as 155 by 2 into 1 by 5. So, I will get 5 ones, 5 3 is 15 and 5 ones 5. So, I will get 31 by 2 days. This is the total time taken by B to complete the work. So, A have initially worked for 5 days 
and B is completing the work in 31 by 2 days. So if I add this, all the days together, I will get what is the total amount of time or days to be taken to complete the work. Now I will I am adding this 5 days plus 31 by 2 days. So I will get 2 5 10 plus 31 that is 41 by 2 days. This can also be written as 20.5 days. That is 21 by 2 days. Okay. So B is taking 20 uh, B is taking 31 by 2 days to complete the work and A is taking 5 days to complete the work. So totally they are taking 20.5 days to complete the work. Now let's see the fifth problem. They are saying that A is 50% as efficient as B. C does half of the work done by A and B together in same time. If C alone do the work in 20 days, then A, B and C together can complete the work in. So we need to find out what is the total time taken by A, B and C together to complete the work. So they are saying A is 50% as efficient as B. So I have already told you how to write efficiencies when it comes to percentages. So they are saying A is 50% as efficient as B. If I assume B's efficiency as 100%, A's efficiency will be only 50%. Okay. A is 50% as efficient as B. So if I assume B's efficiency as 100%, A's efficiency will be only 50%. If I cancel this 51s and 52s, I will get A, is, A and B's efficiency are in the ratio 1 is to 2. And also they are saying C does only half of the work done by A and B together in same time. Okay. Suppose if A and B together can complete one part of work in some time, C completes only half part of the work in same time. Okay, C does only half of the work done by A and B in same time. Okay, C does only half part of the work in same time done by the A and B together. Suppose assume A and B completing the work in 10 days. Okay, then C completes only half part of the work in this 10 days. That's what it means. Okay, suppose assume A and B can complete the work in 10 days. So in 10 days, C will be completed only half part of the work. Okay, so in the question, they are given that C completes the total work in 20 days. Okay, C alone can complete the total work in 20 days. So what is the time taken for C to complete half part of the work? That is 10 days. Okay, C completes total work in 20 days. So C completes half part of the work in 10 days. Right? So in the question they have given that C does only half part of the work when A plus B completes the whole part. So C is completing half part of the work in 10 days. So in 10 days A plus B can complete the whole work. Okay, I will repeat you uh, once again so that you can understand better. See, they have given that C completes only half part of the work when A and B together can complete the work in same time. Suppose assume A plus B can complete the work in 10 days. Okay, assume that A plus B can complete the work in 10 days. So in 10 days, C will be completed only half part of the work. Right? In the same way, they have given that C takes 20 days to complete the work. So in how many days C completes the half part of the work? In 10 days, right? Totally takes 20 days to complete the work. So half part in 10 days, it completes the work. Since C is completing half part in 10 days, A plus B can complete full part of work in 10 days. Okay, that is the uh, secret here. Okay, now they are asking us to find out what is the total time taken by A and B and C toge uh, together to complete the work. Now we have known C's efficiency is 1 by 20 and A plus B efficiency is 1 by 10. Since A and B is completing the total work in 10 days. Okay, now if I substitute A B plus C equal to 1 by 10 plus 1 by 20. That is 10 and 20. The LCM will be 20 and uh, 10 in, 1 by 10 into 20. That is 2 plus 1 by 20. That is 3 by 20. So this is one day's work of A plus B plus C. A plus B plus C totally takes 20 by 3 days. See, I will explain you once again. Okay. C is completing half part of the work when A plus B complete the same work in same time. Okay. C is completing half part of the work that A plus B is done in same time. Suppose assume A plus B is doing the total work in 10 days. In 10 days, C will be completed only half part of the work. Okay, in the same way, C is totally taking 20 days to complete the work. So to complete half part of the work, C takes 10 days only. So in 10 days, A plus B will be completed 
whole part of the work. Okay, A plus B will completed in 10 days, one part of the work. So, C's efficiency will be 1 by 20 and A plus B's efficiency will be 1 by 10. If I add this 1 by 20 and 1 by 10, I will come to know what is the total time taken for A plus B plus C. So, 1 by 10 plus 1 by 20 will be 3 by 20. This is the one day's work of A plus B plus C. So, total it takes 20 by 3 days. Now, let's look at our uh, sixth problem. They are saying that Raj and Rahul together can do a work in X days while their efficiency is in the ratio of 5 is to 3. Raj alone can complete two times of above work with half of his efficiency in 60 days. Then find the value of X. Actually, this is kind of problem where both efficiency and also chain rule is involved. Okay. Now, they are saying that Raj and Rahul. Raj and Rahul. Their ratio of efficiency is 5 is to 3. So, this is the efficiency ratio. Okay. Since efficiency and total time are always inversely proportional, we will get the ratios of total time taken by Raj and Rahul will be 3, 3 is to 5. Okay. This is the days are total time taken. Okay, I have already told you efficiencies and total time taken will be always inversely proportional. Since the ratio of efficiencies of Raj and Rahul are 5 is to 3, the ratio of total time taken by Raj and Rahul will be 3 is to 5. Now, they are also saying that Raj alone completes two times of above work with half of his efficiency in 60 days. Now, let us assume what is the total amount of work to be done. Okay, let us assume the total amount of work to be done as W. Okay, let us assume the total amount of work to be done as W. So, they are saying that Raj can complete two times of above work. Raj can complete two times of above work with half of his efficiency. Raj's efficiency is 5 units. Half of his efficiency in the main, in the sense 2.5 units. Okay, in 60 days. Okay, Raj completes two times of above work with half of his efficiency in 60 days. But we don't know what is the time taken for Raj to complete one part of work if he uses total efficiency. Okay, they have given that to complete two, two times of above work with half of his efficiency in 60 days. But we don't know what is the time taken for Raj if he uses total efficiency to complete this one part of work. So we can write it as to complete one part of work, we don't know what is the time taken for Raj with full efficiency. That is 5 units per day. Now we can use second formula of chain rule here because here two work done are totally different in the both the scenarios. So I can write it as W1 by W2 equal to P1 D1 E1 by P2 D2 E2. So we can write it as 2W by W equal to 60 into 2.5 by D2 into 5. So 2.5 ones, 2.5 twos and 2 ones, 2 thirties. W and W will be cancelled and uh, 2 ones, 2 fifteens. So D2 will be 15 days. Okay, D2 will be 15 days. So Raj totally takes 15 days to complete the work. Now we have already known the ratio of total time taken by Raj and Rahul are 3 is to 5. So 3 parts will be 15 days. Then what is the 5 parts value? We will come to know 3 parts will be 15 days. 5 parts value will be 15 into 5 by 3 that is 3 5 is 15 and 5 5 is 25 that is 25 days. Okay. First we have known that what is the time taken for Raj to complete the work that is 15, 15 days. Okay. We have already known the ratio of total time taken by Raj and Rahul is 3 is to 5. Then 3 parts value will be automatically 15 days. Now 5 parts value will be that is 25 days. Okay. So, we have known what is the total time taken for Raj and Rahul to complete the work. Then we can find what is the total amount of work to be done through this LCA method. Okay. We have already known time taken for Raj and Rahul to complete the work. Then we can easily find the amount of work to be done through this LCA method. Okay. Raj and Rahul, the total amount of work to be done will be 1 is 15 days and 1 is 25 days. The LCM of 15 and 25, that is 25 into 3 will be 75. It will be divisible by 15 also. Then the LCM of 15 and 25 will be 75. Actually, this is the total amount of work to be done. Okay. Total amount of work to be done is 75 units. Then what is the time taken for Raj and Rahul to complete this work? 
So Raj is doing five parts per day, and Rahul is doing three parts per day. If they both combine, they will be doing eight parts per day. Five plus three, okay? Eight parts per day. Then to complete this, seventy-five units of work, they both take seventy-five by eight days. See, I will explain you the problem once again. They are saying that. Raj and Rahul efficiencies will are in the ratio of five to three. Since efficiencies are in the ratio of five to three, the ratio of total time taken by Raj and Rahul to complete the work will be three to five. Since they are both always inversely proportional, okay. And also they are saying that Raj completes two times of total work in sixty days with half of his efficiency. But we don't know what is the time taken for Raj to complete the one part of work with his full efficiency. Okay, here full efficiency is. Five units and half is efficiency is two point five. Through using this chain rule, we can find out what is the time taken for Raj to complete the total work with his full efficiency. Okay, that is fifteen days. And also, we have already known the total time taken ratio of Raj and Rahul is three is to five. So three parts will be fifteen days. Now five parts will be twenty five days. So if total time taken by Raj and Rahul is known, then we can find out what is the total amount of work to be done using this LCM or units method that we used in the first tutorial. Okay. Now Raj is taking fifteen days and Rahul is taking twenty five days. The LCM of fifteen and twenty five will be seventy five. That is total amount of work to be done. But Raj is completing three five units per day and Rahul is completing three units per day. So th if they combine and work together, they will be complete eight units per day. So to complete this 75 units of work, the total takes 75 by 8. That is 75 by 8 days. Okay.